Uh, what the... Again? What is this? Ah, come on, you know what this is about. Get up! Ah, uh, now I remember. It's the third episode of our Cyberpunk 2077 character costume series. In this episode, we're gonna do the yellow samurai jacket you all been waiting for! Hell yeah! So just sit back, relax, and eat your noodles and watch us do all the work! First off, we need to make the pattern. I use a basic jacket template that I'm adjusting for this project. And remember, always measure once and cut twice. Uh, I meant the opposite. And to make this jacket look as nice as possible, we're gonna make both inner lining, middle lining and the outer fabric, which is a quite thin ripstop fabric, so we need to heat press some interfacing onto it to make it look better. So that makes this a 4 layer jacket, which is quite overkill for cosplay. But we like to make things overkill, so... Good job, Pascal. Now let's see how the middle liner fits. Yeah, that feels good. I can work with this. always overlock all my edges. It keeps them from fraying and it just looks better. The outer layer needs to be about 5mm larger than the middle liner. And that's simply because it needs to fit outside of the liner. You know, physics! Nah, move away cat! I wanna see how this fits! Yeah, it fits really nice. Now, we actually decided to use a real zipper than to make that odd-looking thing from the game. Because I wouldn't be able to close this for real. Oh yeah, shoulder pads. Great. The Aedas is back. Oh, it works. Stretchy fabric? Tack it in place with hand stitches instead of pinning it. Much easier. Alright, let's see. I'm gonna do some measurements. Can I borrow that? Thank you very much. Hmm. You know, I got a bazooka in the corner over there. Mm-hmm. Should I kill you with it? Hmm. No, I'm gonna do the collar. First I drew a sketch of it, making sure all the measurements and everything were right. And then I laid out the LED lights and drew the patterns for them. I made one side, then I folded the paper, went to the window to see through the paper and then I traced it onto the other side to have a mirror image. Then I cut out the pattern, leaving some marginal in the bottom that I also sliced up so that Eleanor can help me trace where the collar should meet with the jacket all the way around. Yay! Now let's trace the pattern onto some 20mm thick foam. I used a leather roll tool to trace out through the paper onto the foam where the grooves for the lead strips should be. And then I just fill in the lines with a pen. I'm using an addressable RGB lead strip that I'll control with an Adafruit Gemma M0. That way I can actually turn any lamp into any color I want. And there are six rows of lead strips, and since they're not that flexible, I had to connect the corners with cables. And when I was done with the soldering, I insulated the connections with some hot glue. Now at this point I realized the idea with the grooves weren't working anymore, so I just made a big flat valley in the middle. After using a Dremel to finish off the edges, I used a heat gun to close the pores and the foam and also bend the whole collar into shape. Yep, that'll work. No, 
want to see how it looks with all the shiny LEDs. Moment of truth. OMG, shiny. But it needs to be diffused, so I use some white packaging foam I had laying around and I cut it into the right thickness and put it in front of the LEDs using some Casco RX glue because it's a transparent glue that also doesn't burn the foam saxophone solo! When we're diffused and we know everything is working, we can put some fabric on. And the first layer is a white cotton layer that I just glue on with some spray adhesive. This layer also helps to diffuse the LEDs a little bit more. Fantastic! Now when we're done with that, we can go on to make the panel on the inside. And for that, I'm gonna use some transparent Vorbla. Now you can use anything transparent, I just had this piece laying around. And then I placed it on a color pattern I made earlier, masked the whole thing, and cut out and saved the parts that I still want to see through, then I sprayed the whole thing with a couple of layers of black plastic dip. And when the plastic dip was dry, I peeled off the strips of tape with an X-Acto knife. And then I finish it off with some glossy no tag coat. Time to glue it on to the collar. And to subscribe. Now let's dress her up. Cut off the sewn edges a lot because otherwise it would build up on the inside and it would look bulky and ugly. And when everything was sewn together, I put her in place with some contact cement. Now that looks nice to me. I'm really happy with the result. Let's do the flaps on the arms. I glued on some fake leather on the backside, and then I used the same fake leather to do some nice overlapping edges. Now, one advice to you all out there never ever skip the heat pressing. It looks so much nicer. And there are the little things on the sides of the flaps. Then I glued them onto the jacket and I also made some invisible stitches on the upper side. Now that's a brick. I use it to press the pieces together while the glue cures. I cut out some metal wire that I pushed into the leather on the downside of the flaps, so I'll be able to bend the leather into the shape it should be. Put some velcro between the flap and the arm so they don't flap around like wings. That would be ugly. Now what are you doing, Eleanor? I'm making the pocket on the arm. First I made the pattern on the front side. Then I sewed everything together. It got both zipper and lining. been really hard to sew this pocket on with a machine so I actually hand stitched it on. It didn't take that long and it looks way better. Now I'm gonna do the big buttons on the shoulders. I 3D modeled these and printed them out and then I dressed up the middle part. They lock within themselves so the back panel goes through the jacket and the middle part and then it locks with this uh, top hat that I really need to sand down. And then paint with some nice black. 
And after carefully marking out where the button should be, the most scary part of this whole process, cutting into the jacket. Well, I think this is good. Oh, it's too late. But before I put the buttons in, I have to sew the edges so they don't fray. The middle part and top hat. And it just clicks in. And there you go. Now let's do the little patch on the left arm. I covered some thin cardboard, then I printed out the picture that we had screenshot from the jacket in the game, stroke on some pencil graphite on the back side of the picture, flipped over and then traced the lines of the artwork onto the fabric. Simple as that. And then I just painted it with acrylic paint. And to make the edges look sharper, I used a ball pen to trace them. Now let's do the shoulder plate that will contain all the electrical stuff. I used a transparent vorbler to cut out some windows for the lamps. To smooth out the print lines, I used some acetone and I rubbed it on with a brush. When you do this, the print gets discolored, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna sand it down a little bit more and later on we're also gonna paint it. I printed this out flat, so we need to heat it up and bend it into the shape of the shoulder. Now let's do some techy stuff. Inside of this we're gonna fit a battery, an Adafruit Gemma M0 and also a battery charger. Now, to be able to charge the battery and also change the code of the Gemma M0, I need to be able to fit a little micro USB between the lamps. I actually had to cut off some material of the cable, but now it fits. For the lamps, I cut off just one piece of the same addressable RGB strip as I used for the collar. Then I filled up the lamps with some diffusion material, aka hot glue, and then I put the lamps in place. And now we can paint the whole thing. Now to paint on the text, because I don't have a laser cutter, making stencils this small is really hard. Now as you see, I already pre-made the holes for stitching on the fake leather on the sides. Once sewed on, I just bend them over and glue them to the back side. There we are. What are you doing, Eleanor? Sorry about that, I was a little tired. Let's do the breast cable insert. That's probably not what they are, but I will call them that anyway because I don't know what else to call them. I place some faux leather on top of the outer fabric and then sew in some cotton strings to make the cable hump. Cut it! Okay, cut it slowly. No, no, don't rush this. Don't rush this. Okay, take it easy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you scared me there. <laughs> take it slow. No worry, I never lose my cool. Now, since we made some seam allowances on the breast cable insert, we can just sew them in place. And there you have it! Now I 
can put the shoulder plate in place. And since I need to be able to flip the on and off switch on the Gemma M0, I needed to cut a hole in the jacket so I can reach in for it. And then I used a pre-made hole once again to sew the plate onto the jacket. to the collar. It has some plates on the back side so I 3D printed them out and sanded down and painted black. And these are also gonna get some fake leather sides. And while we wait for the paint to dry, let's make the cable that runs from the collar back to the shoulder plate. I'm gonna make it out of foam clay. I made a pattern on the cable out of tape first and then I rolled out the foam clay to the right thickness. Then I put the tape pattern on and just cut it out. And now to form the foam clay you use a little bit of water. Now we can make the grooves that makes the four cable lines. And a couple of days later when the foam was fully dried I could sand down all the imperfections. I also made a groove on the back side for the real cables that runs from the collar to the shoulder plates. And then I primed it with flex bond. This is great priming to have on foam that are really flexible. Then I put a couple of layers of Plasti Dip on. Then primed it with some natural grey. And then colored it the blue color it's gonna be. And when that was dry, I put some glossy no tack finish on. Now this is gonna keep its flexibility without ever cracking. Now we're almost done with the jacket. But first, I need to put some fake leather on the sides of the collar plates. Check 43. Now, since I glue these on, I use tape to mask off the edges so they're nice and sharp. Then I bend them over the edges and glue them to the back side also. comes a really tedious part, sewing on the collar to the jacket. First I use some glue to just fasten it in place, and then I had to hand sew it on. The reason why I wanted to do that is because then I can do these really nice invisible stitches. You go up through the bottom and the side, then you go back in the same hole on the side, but in an angle and make a new hole in the bottom. And that way, the stitch is invisible. And then I had to do it all the way around. And because Robin don't have the cybernetic upgrade of backwards pointing arms, I had to do the backside. Now let's connect the collar to the shoulder plates. And we're done. Hell yeah.
now there we are. The jacket is done and the whole costume is done. High five, Eleanor! Hell yeah! Now, if you haven't seen the two previous episodes in this series, I suggest you go watch them too. Thanks for liking and subscribing and for watching. See, See you in the next, next project. project. All right, so we woke up this morning, uh, night after making the B-roll, and uh, found these laying here. <laughs> we forgot the pin. We forgot to put on the pin. Okay, there you go. There's the pin. Thanks for watching.